Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at chords and circles, specifically chord theorems that are within circles. So the first one we're going to start with is diameter chord theorem. And this one says, if a diameter in a circle is perpendicular to a chord, so if we have a diameter that is perpendicular to a chord, so remember diameter goes through the center of a circle, and a chord goes from one side to another, so there's our diameter, there's our chord. Then the diameter bisects the chord and bisects the arc determined by the chord. So if you have the stuff in pink, then we know those two are going to be congruent, and we know those two are going to be congruent. Okay. So if we write in um, symbols what we have in our picture, if we have mi, is a diameter. Is perpendicular to AD. And it's a chord. Then we can say two things. One, we can say DE is equal to AE. And then we could also say arc DI is going to be congruent and equal to AI. And if we try out some examples of these, I've got some on the back here. If we try out some examples of these looking at the diameter chord theorem, this one says find X. And if we look, we've and with with these, you're pretty much going to have to look at the picture, and from the picture, be able to identify specifically what parts you're working with, so you know which theorem to use. So looking at this one, we've got our diameter. Diameter's right here, and we've got our chord going right here. So that tells us that this one is going to be equal to that one and that one's gonna be equal to that one. And that's just using the diameter chord theorem. So they want us to find X. Well, X is part of this chord that's been bisected by the diameter. So X is gonna be equal to 10. Looking at this one, they want us to find X. So just to double check it and show that we have diameter chord. Here's our diameter. Here's a chord. And there's where it shows that it meets at a 90 degree angle. If we have those two things, then we know that EH is equal to HG and EF is equal to arc FG. And they want us to find X. Well, FG is equal to FE by our diameter chord theorem, but they don't just give us FE. They give us this whole big arc right here, EFG. Well, if FG is equal to X and it's equal to FE, we got to say that one's equal to X too. So we can go that X plus that X is equal to 134. And if we simplify X plus X is 2X is equal to 134. Divide both sides by 2, and x is going to be equal to 67. So x is 67, fg is 67, and fe is equal to 67. Okay. Looking at the next one, they want us to find x. So double checking and make sure, making sure it really is the diameter chord theorem. Here's a diameter, here's a chord. And since we have a diameter and a chord that are perpendicular to each other, that tells us that this one is equal to that one, and that arc is equal to that arc. So, don't need anything with the arcs, but we do need um, information with those two chords. And we know those two chords, or parts of chords, those two segments, are equal to each other. So we've got 9x minus 3 is going to be equal to 
7x plus 5. So solve for x, subtract 7 both sides, add 3 both sides, 2x is going to be equal to 8, divide both sides by 2, and x will be equal to 4. And they could def you to definitely ask for the value of um, from P to that part where it intersects the diameter. But they and all you would need to do is substitute in X, but they didn't ask for that, so we're doing okay. Alrighty, looking at the next one. They've got 9x here and then 80 minus X. And they want us to find arc CD. So they want to know the value from there to there. Okay. So if we give this one a try, we've got to double check and make sure we really do have our diameter chord theorem. So there's a diameter, there's a chord, and they intersect at a 90 degree angle. So we can use our theorem. And our theorem says that that value right there is going to be equal to that value right there. And then this arc is equal to that arc. And that helps us be able to say, and if you want to write it out notation-wise, CD, arc CD is going to be equal to arc ED. So then we can say 9x is equal to 80 minus x. We're solving for x, so add x to both sides. 10x is going to be equal to 80. Divide both sides by 10 and x is equal to 8. But we're not done because they asked for CD. So to get CD, we've got to arc CD is going to be equal to 9 times 8. So CD is going to be equal to 72. So those are some examples of how they can do diameter chord theorem. There's definitely other things that they could do, but I feel like these are probably the most common. Alrighty, looking at the next one, we've got the equidistant chord theorem. So looking at the words, it looks like we're going to have things that are equidistant or the same distance, and then we're going to have chords, so chords that are the same distance. Specifically, if two chords are this in the same circle, our congruent circles are congruent, then they are equidistant from the center of the circle. So what this one is saying is, if two chords are the same circle or congruent circles are congruent. So we've got to have congruent chords. So in this case, it would be CH and RD. Then they are equidistant from the center of the circle. So then we know that is going to be equal to that. So I'm going to put two marks. So if two chords are congruent, then they're going to be the same distance from the center of the circle. So if we put this in words, if CD is congruent to, oh that's CH. If CH is congruent to DR, so if two chords are the same circle, or congruent circles are congruent, then we can say that EO is equal to OJ. And we could also do the converse. If two chords of the same circle or congruent circles are equidistant from the center, so with this one, if two chords of the same circle or congruent circles are equal from the center. So in this case, we've got that right there. So if you have EO is congruent to OJ, then you can say the chords are going to be congruent. So CH congruent to RD. So to try out a couple that look like that. 
So with these, we're looking for congruent distance from the center. So for this one, we would have to have um, congruent distance from the center. That's the big part. Got to have the center of the circle. And this one is congruent chords is what you're starting with. So that's how you tell the difference between the converse and the regular. Remember, converse all only means you're, you're solving for the problems backwards. So looking at this, we either have to have um, two congruent chords or we have to have um, equidistant from the center. Chords equidistant from the center. So if you look for the two chords that are congruent or um, two chords that are equidistant from the center. If you look right here, this distance right there is the same as that distance right there. So that makes this one be the equidistant chord converse. So since these two are equal, we can say AB is going to be equal to DC. And that lets us be able to, they want us to find DC. And in order to know what the length of DC is, we would have to find X. So we've got to set up an equation to solve X. So AB is going to have a value of 3X minus 11 is equal to X plus 9. Solving our equation from x, subtract x for both sides. Okay, that leaves us with x equal to 10, but we're not done because they want us to find dc. So dc is equal to x plus 9, but we know x is 10. So dc is going to be equal to 10 plus 9. And DC is going to be equal to 19. Okay, so there's one example of the equidistant chord converse. And then looking at this one, one way that they can show that um, either the chords or the distances are congruent is by using the little um, the tick marks or the hash marks that we're used to seeing. Another way that they can do that is like what they did here with chord JK and chord ML. They didn't use the tick marks, but they did use numbers to show that they are congruent. So looking here, we've got chord JK is congruent to ML, and they use numbers. So we've got a if JK is equal to ML, then we can say KN is going to be equal to ln. And this is our equal, and since we started with the chords being equal, two chords congruent, that's the equidistant chord theorem. Okay. So they want us to solve for kn. Kn is right there, and in order to be able to have the value for what Kn is, we have to know what x is. And in order to be able to know what x is, we've got to set up an equation to solve for x. And that's where Kn being equals to ln comes in real handy. Because we've got Kn is equal to 7x minus 10 is going to be equal to 3x plus 6. Subtract 3x from both sides. 4x minus 10 is equal to 6. Add 10 to both sides, 4x is equal to 16, divide both sides by 4, and x is going to be equal to 4. But we aren't done because they want us to solve for kn. kn is equal to 7x minus 10. So kn is going to be equal to 7 times 4 minus 10. So kn is going to be equal to 28 minus 10. So kn is going to be equal to... 18. So there's a couple examples of what they could do with the uh, equidistant chord theorem and its converse.